You're listening to Book Insights, brought to you by Memoed. Finding and simplifying the world's most powerful ideas to fit into your lifestyle. Each episode is a deep dive into a nonfiction bestseller that can change your life or make you think. In around 30 minutes, you'll learn all about a book that offers wisdom for your life, career, or business. So get ready to live and work smarter, better, and happier with Book Insights. Imagine riding on a beam of light across the universe. Stardust, moons and planets would rush by at 300,000 kilometers per second. But the hands on your pocket watch, curiously, would stop moving. Traveling at the speed of light, time itself would freeze, even as the rest of the cosmos seemed to be in perpetual motion. So began one of the first thought experiments by a 16-year-old dreamer named Albert Einstein. Within a decade, Einstein would begin shaking the foundations of physics and the world views of people across the planet. But at that moment, Albert was perfecting a plan to renounce his German citizenship, leave his militaristic high school, and avoid being conscripted into the Prussian army. He sought sanctuary in anti-war Switzerland and in one of Europe's leading science universities in Zurich. Einstein's breakthroughs in mapping the dynamics of the universe and his lifelong opposition to war are chronicled in intricate detail in Walter Isaacson's book, Einstein, His Life and Universe. Today, Einstein is seen as a scientific supernova, one of the most famous faces on the planet. Yet the teenage Einstein started his Swiss university life as a stateless refugee. Isaacson tracks Einstein as he morphs from a young rebel tearing down the walls of classical physics including Newton's clockwork universe, to the most revered scientist of the 20th century. From his earliest opposition to Germany's military build-up, to his drive to prevent an intercontinental nuclear arms race. Isaacson writes, A century after his great triumphs, we are still living in Einstein's universe. In this book Insight, we will first look at Einstein's emergence as a Moonlighter scholar, who helped spark the 20th century revolution in physics, in relativity and quantum theory, while working full-time as a patent clerk in the Swiss capital. Second, zoom in on Einstein's model of the universe, crisscrossed by four-dimensional speedways through space and time. Third, follow Einstein as he risks his life as a Jewish anti-war campaigner in Berlin, then his fortuitous journey to the United States just weeks before Hitler is named Chancellor and launches his tyrannical Third Reich. Fourth, see how Einstein the pacifist becomes a pivotal advocate for the US to develop atomic weapons before the Nazis do. Fifth, how Einstein comes under attack by American cold warriors bent on silencing liberal thinkers opposed to the spiraling arms race and to the shrinking First Amendment rights of US citizens. Across his life and scientific advances, Albert Einstein was a great juggler. Here's Isaacson talking with NPR on what he found fascinating about young Einstein. When he was a patent clerk in, you know, Bern, Switzerland in 1905, you know, he was only in his mid-20s. And so I wanted to show him as a young, vibrant uh, individual, not as this icon with a halo of hair and piercing eyes that we remember in his later photographs. While working his first day job at the Swiss patent office to support his young family, he scrambled to complete his doctoral degree. He cranked out a series of papers in the spring of 1905 that would overthrow classical physics. These miracle year breakthroughs started with a theory that light could travel not just in waves, but in tiny bullets or photons that could ricochet off electrons. This caused them to spin out of orbit around an atom, Einstein's revelation on the photoelectric effect would, 16 years later, earn him the Nobel Prize in physics and add momentum to the quantum revolution. But it was his special theory of relativity that would make his name and provide a new geometry of space-time. Using a model involving trains and clocks, inspired by the Bern train station near the patent office where Einstein worked, he postulated that if the speed of light was an eternal constant, time would slow down for observers approaching that speed. 
This relativity of time and space would outshine Isaac Newton's mechanical understanding of the universe. Einstein proposed that the new concepts of time and space likewise required a novel analysis of the relationship between mass and energy. He stated, The mass of a body is a measure of its energy content. His formula outlining this connection, E equals mc squared, would become the most famous equation of all time, and its effects in the real world would result in the explosion of the first atomic bombs. Einstein expanded his theory of relativity to explain how gravity makes ripples into the fabric of space-time, which in turn shape the orbits of planets around stars. Einstein theorized that gravity simultaneously sculpts stars into near-perfect spheres and galaxies into whirling spirals. His new relativity equations could even determine the contours of the entire cosmos. Yet he discovered that slightly tweaking these equations could create massively different universes. He outlined a succession of models that morphed from a reasonably static spherical universe whose radius never changes, to a disc-shaped cosmos that expands virtually into eternity. Einstein's four-dimensional atlas of the universe imagined a matrix of space-time bridges linking distant regions of the universe, along with gravitational waves triggered by colliding stars. European and American physicists eventually concluded that the vision was essentially correct, a century after Einstein's prediction. Einstein also forecast that there should exist supermassive natural cosmic lenses virtual telescopes formed by clusters of stars that can magnify images of the most distant galaxies. Astronomers later peering across the heavens via the Hubble Space Telescope found this prediction to be true as well. Einstein's gravitational lenses and still-to-be-detected wormholes linking remote star systems are all part of the fantastical cosmos he constructed through pure imagination and logic via his visualizations of astrophysical processes. This ability to visualize and run in-depth thought experiments set him apart from other physicists. For Einstein, his scientific papers were only the final expression of processes he already witnessed in his mind. After Einstein published the field equations animating his relativistic universe, other astrophysicists began using these formulas to describe more exotic features of the celestial structure. For instance, German astronomer Karl Schwarzschild was the first to map the intense gravity and curvature of space-time inside a collapsed giant sun. These invisible stars, capable of ripping apart planets or other stars that orbited too closely, would even warp the passage of time for any astronaut pulled inside their jet-black circumference. In Vienna, theoretical astronomer Kurt Gödel used Einstein's equations to describe a universe spinning on its axis like a record on a turntable. Gödel posited, by making a round trip on a rocket ship in a sufficiently wide curve, it is possible in these worlds to travel into any region of the past, present and future, and back again. In this cosmic model, a time traveler launched in a space-time capsule today could go back and meet a younger version of herself in the past, hand-delivering a matrix of personalized portents of the future. All these seemingly crazy thoughts stemmed from Einstein's fundamental shift in understanding in the nature of space and time. Let's break for now, but we'll first go over what we learned from Isaacson's biography on Einstein. We looked at young Einstein's years in a Swiss patent office. By 16, he developed the earliest form of the relative and quantum theories. Then we looked at how Einstein imagined the universe, which evolved around his theory of space-time. Next, we'll look at Einstein's history with Hitler and the atomic bomb. Enjoying this episode of Book Insights? If so, keep listening and learning. There's a collection of over a hundred titles you can read or listen to now at memodapp.com slash insights. That's M-E-M-O-D-A-P-P dot com slash insights.
We're continuing our discussion on Einstein, his life and universe. It's by best-selling biographer Walter Isaacson. This time, we'll peer into the history of anti-war and Hitler's rise to power. Then we'll look at the beginnings of the atomic bomb. More than a decade after renouncing his German citizenship, Einstein was lured back to Berlin with a prestigious research post at the Prussian Academy of Sciences. Yet while there, perfecting the equations behind his general theory of relativity, Einstein was once again repulsed by the glorification of the military that accompanied Germany's entry into the Great War. While some of his fellow scientists joined Berlin's drive to mass-produce poison gases, opening the era of chemical warfare, Einstein issued calls for conscientious objectors across Germany and around Europe to refuse to take part in any facet of the war. Remarkably ahead of his time in politics, as in physics, Einstein also began promoting the formation of a United States of Europe, a prototype European Union with a democratic leadership. He also proposed a world government that had the power to peacefully mediate disputes between states before they could blow up into armed conflicts. Germany's defeat in the war triggered the breakup of its empire, and tortuous reparations payments accelerated the collapse of the German mark. Malcontents on the fringes of German politics blamed pacifists and Jews for what had happened, as the Nazi party started gaining its first converts. Here's Isaacson talking with NPR about this dark period in European history. They had just proven correct his uh, general theory of relativity, and he arrived because Chaim Weizmann said, why don't you come to America because this anti-Semitism that's mm -hmm. growing up in Germany right now that's attacking your theories, that's going to be a problem and we need to raise money for Jewish scholars. A band of extremists in the capital, operating in broad daylight, opened fire with a machine gun on Germany's Jewish foreign minister. Einstein and a million other Germans staged a march outside the Reichstag, the national parliament, to protest the assassination. But not everyone felt sympathy. A rising political figure by the name of Adolf Hitler called the killers German heroes. In Berlin, police warned Einstein that he might be next. As the most prominent Jewish scientist in Germany, his name was on a list of targets for assassination compiled by Nazi supporters. Yet Einstein ignored police advice to flee the city. He instead joined a campaign for cooperation involving scholars worldwide, launched by the fledgling League of Nations. He also stepped up calls to create new Jewish settlements as sanctuaries across British-controlled Palestine. Although awarded the Nobel Prize that same year, Einstein's rocketing prestige on the international stage would provide scant protection from anti-Jewish agitators. As his star plummeted in Berlin, it was rising in the Western democracies. When British astronomers confirmed Einstein's theory of gravitational lensing by massive bodies like the Sun, the Times of London proclaimed that Einstein's reinvention of cosmology was a new philosophy of the universe. The New York Times quoted a British astrophysicist as saying, Einstein's relativity revolution was one of the greatest perhaps the greatest of achievements in the history of human thought. The front page coverage given to Einstein's triumphs in theoretical physics in part reflected a great public yearning to understand the physics of the cosmos. Einstein's new depictions of the universe, while mystifying, exerted a powerful attraction on curious minds across the globe. Warped space, the bending of light rays, time and space not absolute, the relativity theory had the wondrous mix of huh and wow that captured the public imagination. Einstein, who apart from anything else was a brilliant writer, quickly became a dream source of marvellous quotes and witty aphorisms for British and American reporters. He was a subject who could expertly perform for the press and paparazzi. Not many great physicists were media figures. His exploding fame and theories generated a burst of invitations to become a visiting scholar from some of the world's leading universities, from Oxford to Paris to Princeton. It was during one of these scholarly sojourns at the California Institute of Technology that Einstein was asked for his reaction to Hitler just being named Chancellor of Germany. 
he told a reporter from the New York World Telegram, I shall live only in a country where civil liberty, tolerance and equality of all citizens before the law prevail. Such things had originally attracted him to Switzerland. He added, Hitler's Germany did not meet these standards of fundamental human rights. Moreover, as he once told his friend Jost Winterler, blind respect for authority is the greatest enemy of truth. Weeks later, Germany torched the Reichstag, purged Jewish students and professors from German universities, and ransacked Jewish homes and businesses, including Einstein's own Berlin apartment. Einstein once again repudiated his German citizenship and resigned from his post at the Prussian Academy. Isaacson writes, The Nazis were furious that he had preempted them by renouncing, very publicly, with headlines in the papers, his citizenship and academy membership, before they could strip him of both. Einstein would find refuge at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, where he continued exploring the ethereal equations animating the unfolding of the cosmos. His image as a savant in astrophysics and a leading apostle of the pacifist movement made him widely admired. In 1938, he placed second in a poll of incoming freshmen at Princeton University as the world's greatest living person. But the survey also showed that these pacifists were still outnumbered. Polling just ahead of Einstein in first place was Adolf Hitler. News of Hitler's construction of concentration camps across Germany and his master plan to militarize the populace while rebuilding the German Empire led Einstein to radically change his pacifist positions. Fellow emigrant physicist Leo Szilard visited Einstein in the summer of 1939. Szilard briefed him on German advances in splitting the uranium atom by bombarding it with neutrons, along with his own experiments in triggering nuclear chain reactions. They soon realised the implications. Anyone who succeeded in developing a weapon that unleashed the immense energy locked inside the atom would gain unimaginable military superiority over their rivals. They warned Franklin Roosevelt of the horrible danger presented by a Nazi Germany armed with atomic weapons. They urged the US president to race Hitler to become the first power with a uranium bomb. Einstein wrote to Roosevelt, it may be possible to set up a nuclear chain reaction in a large mass of uranium, by which vast amounts of power and large quantities of new radium-like elements would be generated. This new phenomenon would also lead to the construction of bombs, and it is conceivable, though much less certain, that extremely powerful bombs of a new type may thus be constructed. After Einstein composed his appeal, but before it could be delivered, German shock troops invaded Poland triggering the start of World War II. When Roosevelt received Einstein's letter, he ordered the creation of an atomic weapons research group, which began the race to develop the first nuclear bombs. The Nazis' bloodshed and military conquests across Europe triggered the escape of dozens of the continent's leading physicists to the sanctuary of the US. Many, like Szilard and Nobel Prize winner Niels Bohr, joined the American bomb design group, codenamed the Manhattan Project. But even before a prototype could be tested, in the spring of 1945, Einstein and Szilard began pleading that the US president forego deploying an atomic bomb against the people of Germany or Japan. The Axis armies were nearly defeated, they believed, and there should be no rush to enter the era of nuclear warfare. But Einstein's last letter to Roosevelt would be found unopened, after the leader's sudden death in April of 1945. Four months later, the newly installed President Truman, with little high-level debate, proceeded to ignite the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in radioactive flames. Right after dropping the first two atomic bombs, the US government issued an official history of the Manhattan Project. This underscored Einstein's letter to the White House that led to the launching of the top-secret program. To his horror, Einstein became associated in the popular imagination with the making of the atom bomb. Time put him on its cover with a portrait showing a mushroom cloud erupting behind him with E equals MC squared emblazoned on it. 
Einstein would spend the rest of his life trying to ensure that nuclear bombs would never again be aimed at civilian targets. In a two-part essay on his anti-nuclear proposals, Atomic War or Peace, published by the Atlantic Monthly magazine and highlighted in his book Ideas and Opinions, Einstein outlined his futuristic goals for the control of atomic weaponry. A world government should be formed, with a council and assembly elected in a secret ballot by peoples across the globe. That would take control of the combined military forces of the United States, the Soviet Union and Great Britain. The newly created United Nations could be expanded into the core of this democratic federation, which would also safeguard but never use the globe's atomic arsenal. Einstein prepared his proposals with warnings on the inevitable doomsday of any atomic arms race. He wrote, Unless another war is prevented, it is likely to bring destruction on a scale never before held possible, and even now hardly conceived, and little civilization would survive it. But after the Soviets assembled their own atomic weapons, Truman announced the US would develop the ultimate destroyer, a hydrogen bomb that could, in a flash, wipe out an entire megacity's populace. That same day, Einstein was interviewed for a new NBC program called Today with Mrs. Roosevelt. The former first lady, who became a leading voice for progressivism in Cold War America, asked Einstein about the future weapon. If the new arms race morphed into a clash of thermonuclear warheads, he predicted the human race would be faced with total annihilation. Einstein also warned that American citizens and their views on everything from atomic arms to liberal politics were being placed under surveillance by an increasingly powerful security sector. Isaacson writes, As if to prove him right, FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, who hated communists and Eleanor Roosevelt with almost equal passions, the very next day ordered a report on Einstein's loyalty and possible communist connections. As in Germany, Einstein was now paying a price for his outspokenness and strong belief in freedom of speech. Let's break for now. But before we go, let's recap what we've gone over. We've covered Einstein's rise in Western scientific and scholarly circles, just as his home country of Germany began to turn on him. He emigrated and renounced Germany before Hitler's followers could renounce him. Einstein initially urged Franklin Roosevelt to push for nuclear weapons after Nazi Germany was starting to develop their own. Einstein failed to dissuade the US government in time before they bombed Japan twice with atomic weaponry. We'll conclude our discussion on Isaacson's Einstein biography next time. We'll explore Einstein's clashes with a growing Cold War mindset. Then we'll reflect on the physicist's legacy. Enjoying this episode of Book Insights? If so, keep listening and learning. There's a collection of over 100 titles you can read or listen to now at memodapp.com slash insights. That's M-E-M-O-D-A-P-P dot com slash insights. It cannot be my task today to act as a church of the conduct of a nation which for many years has considered me as her own. That's Albert Einstein's voice, taken from his public denunciation of Nazi Germany. We're concluding our look into the life and history of Einstein. This is covered in the best-selling biography by Walter Isaacson. It's called Einstein, His Life and Universe. Last time, we explored how he became an outspoken anti-war advocate for peace during the rise of World War II, but also became the unintentional grandfather to the atomic bomb. We'll end this time with Einstein's history during the Cold War era. Then we'll reflect on the man's legacy. The FBI took note of Einstein's proposals for a pacifist renaissance in the atomic age, and for freedom of speech, even amid the pressures of the Cold War. These later became available under a Freedom of Information petition. FBI agents stated that this turncoat on nuclear weaponry headed the Emergency Committee of Atomic Scientists. 
This group aimed to call worldwide attention to the perils of atomic missiles and appealed for the elimination of war. The conservative zealot J. Edgar Hoover ran the FBI like his own personal fiefdom for nearly half a century. Hoover later chronicled Einstein's clashes with the House Un-American Activities Committee. In its pursuit of subversives, who supposedly infiltrated American academia and culture, this congressional cabal began questioning liberal thinkers, writers and filmmakers in proceedings that reminded Einstein of the Gestapo's interrogations. Einstein began advising targets of these investigations to adopt Gandhi's model of civil disobedience. He counseled that refusal to answer any questions about individual political beliefs should be based on the First Amendment's guarantee of free speech and freedom of association. Einstein said that intellectuals had a special duty to invoke these Bill of Rights protections because they're the primary guardians of freedom of thought and of belief. Einstein did not want to see a replay across his adopted homeland of Hitler's attacks on fundamental rights. He was still horrified that most intellectuals in Germany hadn't risen up in resistance when the Nazis came to power. Yet Einstein's stance on passively resisting political interrogations was slammed by editorial boards across the US. Even the New York Times, which over the course of decades had transformed Einstein into the world's superstar in astrophysics, labelled his proposed tactic defying the law. But Einstein never wavered in his belief that independent thought and freedom of expression formed the fountainhead of all advances across the arts and sciences, and of a progressive society. He would remain a champion of these values across a life marked by rebellion against any form of authoritarianism. Einstein's humanist philosophy combined with his belief in a cosmic spirit that permeated the universe, impelled him to stand up for individuals and ideas that came under state attack, and to aid political and religious refugees seeking sanctuary in a democratic society. It may seem surprising that Einstein, the great physicist, had metaphysical views. Here's Isaacson talking with NPR. So a rabbi in New York sent him a telegram saying, Einstein, do you or do you not believe in God? Answer, 50 words or less. And so Einstein didn't even use up the 50 words. He said, I believe in Spinoza's God, a God who is manifest in the spirit of everything that exists and in, in the harmonies of the universe. He believed that a divine design was reflected in the elegant laws that governed the way the universe worked. A young American girl once wrote to ask if scientists pray. Einstein replied, everyone who is seriously involved in the pursuit of science becomes convinced that a spirit is manifest in the laws of the universe, a spirit vastly superior to that of man. Decades earlier, in an essay titled The Religious Spirit of Science, Einstein explained that scientists are often propelled by a religious feeling that takes the form of a rapturous amazement at the harmony of natural law which reveals an intelligence of such superiority that compared with it, all the systematic thinking and acting of human beings is an utterly insignificant reflection. Einstein was influenced by the Dutch philosopher Spinoza and his belief that the universe was deterministic or run by cause and effect. From Einstein's perspective, God did not play dice by allowing any events to be random or undetermined. Isaacson says, that Einstein's concept of a supreme creator who breathed life into the design of the universe in some ways parallels the deistic beliefs of the founders of the United States, including Ben Franklin and Thomas Jefferson. Let's pause for a moment to have a quick recap. Albert Einstein appeared like a shooting star across the sphere of astrophysics while making the first of his great discoveries as a part-time doctoral candidate in Switzerland. His constantly changing simulations of the universe launched a new foundation for cosmology, and future breakthroughs in physics based on his relativity equations are likely to continue into the centuries ahead. Einstein was also a lifelong anti-war activist, risking his life in militarizing Germany to promote resisting the draft. Targeted by the Nazis, Einstein vowed never to return to Germany when Hitler assumed power. 
horrified by the prospect of the Third Reich using nuclear weaponry to achieve world domination, Einstein helped persuade the American government to race to develop atomic bombs first. But even before the first bombs were dropped, Einstein launched a crusade, a movement that continues today, opposing the use of atomic arms against civilians. His role as the planet's most prominent anti-nuclear activist and as a free speech advocate in Cold War America would once again make him a target, this time of the FBI. Perhaps the most surprising thing about Einstein were his metaphysical views. He saw no conflict between greater understanding of the laws of the physical universe and a sense that there was some spirit or higher power behind it all. In the American public's imagination, Einstein and his equations would achieve something like semi-divine status. Isaacson says, the public earnestly puzzled over his theories, elevated him to a cult of genius and canonized him as a secular saint. His childlike wonderment, fused with the spirit of rebellion, guided Einstein through a life of amazing discoveries. In the final passage of his biography, Isaacson writes, And thus it was that an imaginative, impertinent pattern clerk became the mind reader of the creator of the cosmos, the locksmith of the mysteries of the atom and the universe. Walter Isaacson began writing about Einstein when he was the top editor at Time magazine which named Einstein the Person of the Century in its December 31, 1999 issue. Isaacson's meticulously researched biography is packed full of passages from Einstein's scientific papers and comments from his fellow stars in science. He assembled a web of leading physicists across the US and Europe, along with Einstein scholars worldwide, to collaborate on perfecting the manuscript. With Einstein, his life and universe, Isaacson sets a new, stellar standard in the writing of science books, aimed not just at scientists, but at regular people who share Einstein's sense of wonder, but have never had the mathematical or scientific training. Einstein is great not just because of his discoveries, but because he held a mirror to humanity, showing the incredible things we are capable of if individual freedom is preserved and celebrated. Thank you for listening to Book Insights. Check out the rest of our content at memodap.com. Please keep in mind that the information provided in or through our Book Insights episodes is for educational and informational purposes only. It's not intended to be a substitute for advice given by qualified professionals and should not be relied upon to disregard or delay seeking professional advice.